Perfect. We are here in Florence uh, in the Imagina uh, Cinema School uh, house where the Imagina Short Film Festival took place and uh, the best short documentary was awarded uh, a documentary called Save Generation UA by Roman Blasian from Ukraine and we have together with me Anastasia Shostak who is a representative of Raslan Shostak Charitable Foundation who supported this documentary which is about a great project of rescue of children, orphans uh, from Ukraine from the war and they were uh, settled in Turkey, is it correct? correct? And how many children were saved in this way and how difficult was the process? So overall, uh, there are 3,500 people evacuated. Uh, those are children, orphans with their guardians or foster families. Uh, it didn't happen all at the same time. I think the first group was about 200 children. Uh, so it was all happening in like different periods of time, throughout some time in different like groups. Um, it was it was a malicious process. It was very you know tough legal legally speaking um, because you had to get the documents, you had to get the legal requirements, you had to think about the logistics of how you would get the children from the prefrontal zones through Ukraine, which was continuously bombed and shelled at the time, um, then through the border, through different countries, all the way to Turkey and Talia. It's a long way. So um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't a very easy task, but we managed to, 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 to do it. And was it the greatest rescue operation for children since uh, World War II? Was yes, it? so uh, the World Book of Records recognized this project as the largest evacuation of orphans during a war since World War II. But frankly speaking, we would trade the recognition for a peaceful sky in Ukraine in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. And uh, where are they? They are uh, all together in a, in a big hotel, I think. In Antalya, is it? Uh, yes, so uh, there were uh, a couple of hotels at the beginning. So the number of children like keep changing because some decide, um, some turn 18 and they just, they're adults and they decide to move back or go away. Um, some, some, some families decide also to come back to Ukraine, some families decide to stay. Um, so there are different things happening, but in general, yes, there were two hotels at first, the uh, two big hotels, and then uh, the main hotel got uh, expanded, it got larger, and basically now they're all in the same, in the one big hotel, which is just for the kids. Yeah, and their fate in Ukraine, their destiny was meant to be hard, I, I think. Um, I think, I can't tell you the specific number, but I'm pretty sure half of the orphanage houses where the kids lived, they're non-existent anymore. They've been bombed, they've been completely destroyed. So most of the kids, they don't have anywhere to come back to at the moment. Were you in Ukraine when the war started? Or no, 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 by a lucky coincidence, I was abroad. Okay. But I was meant to be in Ukraine, but just somehow, yeah. I don't know. And have you gone back to Ukraine in this uh, War time. Yes. What did you? Yes. Yes. Many times I did go back home because it's home. Um, it's a bit scary. It's a bit of a gamble, might say, because the first time you hear the you hear the air siren, air raid. You hear the like missiles flying over your head. You hear explosions of um, uh, what's it called? The air. I'm not sure what's the name of it. The um, the missiles that hit the other missiles. Okay. The air yeah. defense, the air, like, yeah, once yeah. you hear the explosions from the air defense systems, it's a bit scary. Like, you, you kind of, you don't know what to do, but then at some point you realize that that's just how it is and you need to take cover, you need to know what to do in the situation. But otherwise, life goes on. Um, people are used to it now, which is a horrible thing. Can you imagine being used to yeah, bombs flying around normal, over your head? Yeah. Um, yeah, but you know, it's, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna surrender just that easy. <laughs> it's human to keep on li living. And do you have any 
uh, expectation or fears uh, in terms of the U.S. elections, which will be in a, in a month now? Well, I'm not a politician, I'm not a fortune teller. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a filmmaker and a Ukrainian filmmaker. So I don't really, I mean, I hope for the best, obviously, but I cannot tell you what the mm. best is, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. And this particular project was uh, uh, sponsored in a way by the first lady, the Ukrainian first lady, and the Turkish First Lady, was uh, it? It was, it was First Lady's of Ukraine initiative. She was the first one who raised the issue of uh, Ukrainian orphanages in the prefrontal zones. And then through all the connections with the First Lady of Turkey and then through all the ministries, ambassadors, uh, counts, co consulates, it all came to Ruslan Trostak. And technically speaking, he was the one who uh, founded the project and uh, funded the project and keeps funding it. We did have many donors, we did have many help, um, but mostly it's been all funded by just one person. Okay, and it's going on? It's yes, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it still continues and um, it's not going to stop. So once the war is over and the kids are going back to Ukraine, so the project will then take those kids, bring them back home, and then the project would transform from the evacuation project to a project which would then be responsible of finding a family for each okay. orphan. That's for ambitious. Each orphan. I wish you the best, good luck, <laughs> and you thank you, much. Anastasia, for thank being you. here. Thank you. Giovanni Bogani, it's been a great honor. Hollywood Reporter, Rome. Okay. Thank you. Sì, non mi parla sopra. Thank you.